more on the story. I'm joined on set by our international affairs editor, Rob Parsons. Hello there, Rob. Hi. So this is a close three-way race, but none of these three top parties got a majority. So no. talk us through what this result means for Finland. Yeah, I mean, it was incredibly close. 0.7% divided the three parties uh, and five seats. Uh, interestingly enough, that's the same as happened in 2019 when the last election was held. 0.7% again divided the three parties, although uh, the percentages uh, w were different last time with the Social Democrats winning uh, and the Finns coming second. Uh, what, what it means is that there's going to get, have to be a lot of uh, horse trading o over the next few weeks. But it, it, what, what seems to have decided it is the state of the economy more than anything else. Well, the, the, What's remarkable about it, though, in many ways, is that on a personal level, Sanna Marin remains extremely popular in Finland. According to a poll in December, for instance, 64 percent of Finns say they think she's doing a, re doing a really good or reasonably good job. Most uh, politicians would be really did, happy to have 64 percent. didn't translate <laughs> into the vote for her party. Uh, so that, that's a bit of a mystery. But I suppose that the, the reason for it is, is that the two issues that perhaps... Uh, gained her the most popularity, joining NATO and her support for Ukraine, were not ones that really divided the Finns. The other parties support that as well. She's, it was recognised that she did well in fighting against COVID, but that wasn't decisive. What Finns seem to be worried about is the state of the economy with inflation in December at 9%. And that, it seems, is where Petteri Orpo, uh, the leader of the, uh, the coalition uh, party, uh, seems to have done particularly well. He's regarded as being a safe pair of hands. He's been a finance minister in the past. He's been an interior minister, an agriculture minister. He's conservative in his views. Uh, and by saying that he's going to cut back on spending, uh, increase investment, uh, he seems to have just won that little extra bit of the vote. There's been enough to see him creep ahead of the other two parties. So the challenge here, though, of course, is because no party got a majority, there does have to be some coalition forming. Yeah, the coalition forming is not going to be easy because uh, you need to get over 100 votes to get a majority. There are essentially, you know, Peter Orpo has two options. He can either make a coalition with the Social Democrats or he can make a coalition uh, with the Finns. Uh, in neither case does that get him right across the line, however. He still needs to find other parties. And the problem for doing the coalition with the Finns, the Nationalist Party, is that a lot of the smaller parties have said they don't want to have anything to do with the Finns because of their nationalist views, because their views on immigration and that sort of thing. They're anti-EU. Uh, so for many of the small parties, it's just not acceptable, which tends to suggest, I think, that the, the easiest option for him will be, be doing a deal with Sanna Marin's party. So although she may be out of the premiership, she may be back into the government as part of a new coalition somewhere down the, next, the road in the next two or three weeks. International Affairs Editor Rob Parsons, thanks so much for breaking down this election for us.